All right, if I can have your attention, please, I'll call to order our meeting for September 24, 2013. Jill, if you would, call the roll, please. Mr. Matthews. Here. Mr. Moffitt. Here. Mr. Pollock. Here. We had a set of minutes prepared from our regular trustees meeting dated September 10, 2013. Ed or Mike, are there any changes or corrections? I have none. There being no changes or corrections, those will stand approved and as prepared and presented for us. Well, you have to bear with us tonight. The uh, acoustics are a little different than we're used to in our regular meeting room. But we certainly appreciate those of you who have come out tonight to take a look around station number two and you'll also be hearing from our Stark County Sheriff a little bit later who's taking his time to come out tonight and give a presentation. And someone is coming from the recycling site. Recycle. <laughs> maybe if they can find it, maybe they're alive. <laughs> well, hopefully someone else will be here as well. And I do want to take a moment to thank Ed Moffitt for making those arrangements. And we'll be uh, interested in hearing from those folks later this evening. Moving on with our agenda items, public speech. Does anybody have anything to bring to the attention of the board or any announcements, anything at all, before we proceed tonight? Doesn't look like it. Okay. Ed, you want to move on with the road department? We, uh, when we planned this, uh, we tried to get a little bit of advertising from the local paper, and uh, it still happened our reporter went on vacation, but he had made arrangements for to have a couple spots in the paper. Um, but it didn't work out any, there was nothing yesterday and then today. They were gonna put up directions here. I'm not sure that it would have brought anybody in, but but at least we've, we've tried to get uh, the public aware. There was one news brief. Okay. Uh, we've tried to get the public aware of, of what we have here. Uh, it's kind of a hidden asset, really, because uh, probably three-fourths of the people in the township don't realize it's here. And it's a nice facility. Um, the sheriff's office, um, it really makes a nice, nice thing. And uh, so it worked out. But anyhow, the road department, Mike. <coughs> Request a purchase order to JMB Fleet in the amount of $200 for supplies. So moved. Second. Yes. Request to approve payment to Trailstar in the amount of $180 for two 12-inch air tanks for truck number 10. Um, there's a case that Mike gets, when he gets a price of something, he just don't get the price he gets out and looks at. The original price of those was how much? $525 each. And he got it down to $200 each, so he does his job. I'll make most of it that. Second? Yes. Request a purchase order in the amount of $750 for propane. So second. Yes. <clears throat> FYI, the BWC two-hour safety training will be on October 22nd at Jackson Township Safety Center. Mike Byler will be attending. Okay, I have, I have um, one thing. Um, the township has uh, really had a influx of people going in the ditches in front of their house. They're putting tile in, and uh, those tile, after a period of years, are filling up. Uh, Mike, Mike has been looking at them, and some of them are half full or better. Now, they make a sewer jet, and we had a demonstration of it here a week ago, that will, that it uses high pressure water and forces a pipe through, a hose through the pipe, and then this high pressure cleans it out, and they can actually clean out the, the pipe, uh, and there's 400 feet, they, they have 400 feet on them, and so they, uh, it really works out good. Uh, how many feet have you done lately? Uh, this year, I've got a rough measurement around 1,700 feet. Well, 1,700 feet of pile that's filling up every day. And so, uh, so with that, we, we need to do, we need to look into that. And uh, we 
we've been looking for two years, and we found uh, a used one uh, up north, and um, Mike wasn't satisfied with the price on that, so he looked around on the internet and found the company in Southern Ohio, yeah. and they brought their machine in and demonstrated. Uh, we talked about, we talked about, uh, I had talked to the other townships several times over the years, and they were not interested. And, but now, uh, Marlboro Township has expressed an interest in it. Uh, the used one that we were looking at up north was $50,000. And Mike found a used one. No, I found a new one uh, that's better uh, for forty-two thousand dollars. Now I was going to try to swing that past our clerk. I mean, not with our clerk, but uh, you know how our clerks are. She guards the money. But then Mike was talking to Marlboro, and they expressed an interest in pursuing it going on half on it. And so that brings it down to what I think is really affordable. Uh, Mike, he's cautious and his road program was uh, light this year, so we had $13,000 left over. And then we've got an extra $10,000 in inheritance tax, which is probably the last inheritance tax we're going to get. And uh, so that brings it up to $23,000. And, um, and that's my figures. That brings it up to 23,000. And uh, so I would like to pursue this if we can get an agreement with with Marlboro to go half. Uh, I think it would be a real bargain for us. You had a difficult experience with a shared piece of equipment years ago, but you're willing to put that behind you. <laughs> Let's try it again. Uh, it would be all right then if I go ahead and pursue this and get some iron class figures. Well, the, the finance, financial end of it is one thing, and of course it's nice if someone else is going in, some other entity is going in to share the cost. But you know, literally, there's going to have to be issues with where it's stored, who has access to it, time on it, time on the machine other uses for it because you may be able to rent it out to others. How, long, how many times are you going to use a sewer jet in a year? How many hours are you going to use a sewer jet? Yeah. First couple of years it will probably be quite fair. Okay. And then we need to find a utility for it beyond that. Well, and we've never had no, somebody I, needs to control it. I got a grant for the chipper and uh, I got that grant because Washington and Marlboro went in on the plan for the grant, and we've never had a minutes uh, problem on it. In fact, um, I'm not even sure where we store it. Uh, that's but it's a kind of reinforcing my, my concern about it. It's available, but I don't. Um, I think it needs to be. I don't. I don't. I don't mind you exploring it. But it is something that needs to be very clearly spelled out because you're going to have issues with it. Uh, the, the thing repairs, is, maintenance, insurance. There's a lot to just to divvy up on the machine. The thing is, um, we we still have some inheritance from the MOA, and we could go ourselves. Mm -hmm. We could uh, buy it ourselves, and that way it would eliminate mm -hmm. some of your concern. Um, I, I think that um, the, the issue I've had with the sewer jet is you know, why don't we just rent time first? We can rent time from people, right? Mike's, you'd rather have the autonomy of having the machine yourself, running it when you want? I mean, of course there's ease to use them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was just looking at when we get a pull up, we can mm -hmm. go. Mike, his idea was to, uh, when he 
when you get a slow time is to go in some of the allotments that are really bad. If you have one pipe over there that's probably better than half full, and um, to take and, and do the whole allotment and get it over with and clean it and then you're done. Uh, Mike, you, you thought they were pretty effective though. I was impressed with uh, the demonstration. I thought it was amazing they, uh, what it could do. I think, I think they could do a, well, you're going to have to do it. I mean, eventually you're going to have to have a way to clean them pipes up. But I'll look into it and bring it back and see what we can up with. Well, what's your preference? Is your preference to try the dual arrangement and save a little money? Yeah, that's my preference. Because I'm right with you to, to work. I'm not saying we can't work with Green. Oh, no. Um, the thing is, now, we worked with Marlboro really good. Um, Marlboro um, and our, our guys have worked together for years. Washington Township, somewhat, but not maybe as close as Marlboro. Um, and, and like I say, the chipper for we've never had a minute's problem on that. And um, the chip and seal. And any time um, in the past when we've had a storm that we needed some help on the trees and stuff, um, the other townships are right with us. So I would I would not anticipate any problem at all. It, it, you bring up a good point, maybe we ought to keep track of the hour. But the, the maintenance on that sewer jet, uh, I don't think it would be, do you think it would be too much, Mike? It's just an engine and a pump, basically. It's got a diesel motor. Yeah. Uh, it's, I'll, I'll tell you what, I was really impressed. I, I couldn't imagine how you're going to force that pipe through uh, the hose through the pipe, but they use this hydraulic pressure. And it's... Uh, it's pretty it's really but Anyhow, I'll look into it and I'll bring some figures back and make sure that Marlboro wants to. Uh, and that's the way I would prefer to do it, but uh, I'll be glad to. Uh, no, it's all right. It's all right with you, obviously. Yeah. Okay. I think, I mean, for sure, I think we can talk a little bit. That's fine. Good Sounds good, Ed. <clears throat> but do you, have, do you have anything, Mike? No, that's all I have. Mike? Uh, no, I don't have anything. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, next on the agenda are our fire department items. Chiefs of training. Chiefs of training. Do you want to just cover these, Mike, if you would? Yeah, sure. <coughs> got a request uh, for a purchase order to the treasurer of the state of Ohio in the amount of $150 for dues for volunteer firefighters. Dependent fund, I'll make that a motion. Second. <clears throat> got a request for payment to CLIA laboratory program in the amount of $150 for certification fee for two years. I'll make that a motion. Second. Yeah. Got a request to purchase order to more medical in the amount of $335 for disposable medical supplies. I'll make that a motion. Second. Yeah. And we've got a request to approve payment to Computech in the amount of $215 for repairs to the Chief's computer. And I'll make that a motion. Second. And just so you know on that one, I, uh, I received my new computer through the UAN program. So we had the old one once we had changed off is what happened to Chief's motherboard on his, of course, just a few months out of warranty, burned up on us. So we were able to uh, use, utilize my computer, because it would have been what, over $350 to replace that motherboard or get him a new one, so we were able to do it for just the $215 for their service calls and switched it all over to that one. Good, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to discuss the Fireman's Christmas Party schedule on December 14th. He basically scheduled it for the 14th, it's the same as last year, just wanted to kind of let you guys know. Everybody's so it's the day after ours, so. though. <laughs> Everybody's good with that. Yeah, we would authorize it as payment, uh, as a benefit for volunteer firefighters. Okay, I'll make a motion that we authorize uh, the Christmas party dinner, and we would make a payment for, for as a benefit to the volunteer firefighters. Second. 
And uh, an FYI, there's a, a Neomar class will be held in the township hall every Tuesday and Thursday starting September the 17th through October the 10th. Classes will be moved to Station 2 on the nights that the trustees have a regular move. And that's all I have for the fire. Go ahead. Uh, no, I've got something to do on township that pertains to the fire department building. Yeah. But I'll work on that. All right, thank you, Mike. Linda? Only item on the agenda under zoning is to discuss the status of our complaints. Uh, the one on Green Island, I think, has made a pretty good get in uh, removing a lot of that. And, uh, my understanding is they still plan to take more out, but it looks about 80% better than it did. Did you go by that? I went out like that. Okay. I mean, it's definitely way better. She's made a big attempt to clean up, at least in front of the property. There's a few things. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you talk to her, you... <laughs> felt sorry for her, but uh, she, she has made a, an effort to improve the property for sure. Well, the one on uh, Hazelview with the cards that you gave her 90 days, she's called me a couple of times and I told her she made the arrangements with the trustees. If she wants to change the arrangement, she has to come talk to the trustees. So that's what she made. I thought she unilaterally changed the arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read her handwritten Did you? epistle as a modification of the agreement with you. Yeah, well, I, I told her I had no control, but it was an agreement with the trustees that she would have to speak to them. Uh, I do think- well, Hypothetically, what do you want to do about this? If she does, if she's off of her, off track of her agreement and is not going to remove it in 90 days, what do you want to do about it? What do I want to do? Yeah. Or what do you want to do as a court? I, I think they should just be removed. Okay. But they meet the classification of junk vehicles. Yes, uh, they are not running, they are not licensed. There's obvious uh, damage to them, like flat tires and, and things like that. Unless she can prove that they can start up and drive them. Uh, in this particular case, there is no tree growing up through the middle of it, so that's a benefit. <laughs> yeah, this is easier than the projects we take on where there are 10 junk cars There's right. only two junk cars. Uh, you know, if she can. Uh, demonstrate that she can, that the tires are all inflated, that they will start and run at our license, then she has the right to keep them there. I'm, I'm really not trying to make it more complicated yeah. than, it, than it seems, but we, do, we just need to finish some of these projects. She said and 90 days? And she did, and she's still within her 90. Right. But I get the sense she's going to blow through the 90 and throw up her hands and say, what, so what? What, what are you going to do to me? And it's not like we're doing something to her. No. They're junk, they're junk cars. We've declared them a nuisance, right? Mm -hmm. The state law gives us the authority to remove junk cars that are a nuisance. So I, I just want, I, I'm not here to make the decision, but I just don't know why we wouldn't do anything. No, my my feeling would be okay. to, to remove the junk out of the When's the 90 day time? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, right. The end, the end first, first week of October, I think. Because I think it was July she made the arrangement, okay. arrangement with it. And I think it was the first meeting of July. So that would be the first meeting in October. So we'll see if the I'll month. check the date just to make sure. Who actually is it? We do. We, we arrange it. Yeah, we just call in somebody and you get their tickets. They're usually taken to their lot and then they have a certain amount of time to, you know. You give her notice. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. It used to be more difficult, but you know the nuisance forms that we use for our regular nuisance properties? The statute was, was revised to allow us to get rid of junk vehicles the same way. I have a copy on the desktop. I just was curious. Yeah, I'll be glad to show it to you. But it does make it easier. And, um, I take it your next one that you're going to mention is Beeson, right? Well, I think you may have to do something there because at this point, I don't see any uh, marked improvement. I see a lot of moving around. I see additional cars. I see, you know, maybe they've gotten rid of some plastic. Maybe they've gotten rid of some garbage, but I don't see any marked improvement. So I would think the next step would have Ken file with 
I thought we were already in that in the process. No, we have not. Ken has not filed in the Alliance Municipal Court. <coughs> well, didn't we authorize it? I know we declared it. Did we it declare? Did you? We declared it a nuisance. We filed a three complaints for nuisance. Oh, okay. Well, probably not Beeson yet, though. You filed the three that we're getting the funding on. Yeah, those are the three we're getting. No, I have no, no junk card. I do it on the houses. Right, but not on the one on Beeson no. with all the junk. No. I think we need to authorize him to do that. Do you have any problems with that, Ed? No. Mike? No. That's uh, right. Again, it's just moving the ball, getting these things done. Okay? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I'll move that we authorize Ken Cardinal to proceed on our prior declaration of a nuisance regarding the Beeson property to proceed with a, obtaining a court order to allow us to proceed with the cleanup. Second. Any others in the works right now? Um, yes, the um, car lot on Tullis. I'll have the paperwork for you next meeting to declare that a nuisance. And uh, I'm also going to try to get the house next door onto the program at the county because they still have some funds. So if we can get that cleaned out, because you can have a car lot, you can't have a junkyard. And right now it's a junkyard. And they've uh, gone over to the vacant house next door. So I just can't get it. Yeah. <laughs> so that I'll have everything ready for you next meeting to declare that. Um, and everything is in at the county and the county is hearing back from them. No, but I'd like to see the Parks Department get rid of a certain building out on Union. I had a discussion on that just last week, and uh, I think he was going to talk to Mike. That's probably well, not one we want to tear down. Well, no, but Mike had said something about uh, the block that was out there. Have they called you yet, Mike, from the Parks Department? Okay. Didn't, didn't you basically tell me before that that was a building you could probably knock over with a piece of machinery? It would look better if it was just knocked over with a piece of machinery. Okay, well, I will, I'll make sure. Did they say they're going to clean that up? I mean, yeah. it, they had it on their schedule to do this summer. They just didn't get it done. But it seemed like it would take more. <laughs> no, it, it shouldn't. But I, I'll, I'll call over and talk to them and see if I can't get some. Yeah, just, it, just be, it would look a lot nicer in that area. Because we had offered to help before, yeah, I think the board agreed. Okay. All right. Anything for zoning? No. Mike? Thanks, Linda. Well, Linda, hold on, just one thing. Uh, depending upon whether or not enough signatures are obtained by the group dealing with House Bill Seven, I think they have until October fourth or fifth mm -hmm. to gather enough uh, signatures to put House Bill Seven on the ballot, which would be next year. Assuming they do not get enough signatures, and it doesn't look like they will, the Gaming Act will go in effect immediately. Okay. Which means we need to get the Zoning Commission together. Okay. Uh, we will schedule uh, first we, week in October, uh, second week in October. Well, I would move it into the third week, maybe. Okay. okay. There's been much discussion and much written in the papers about the gaming arcades and what they fall under, what regulation they fall under, who can regulate them. Uh, local authorities have tried to regulate them to some extent and found difficulty doing so. There were a couple of acts passed by the General Assembly, one a couple of years ago setting a moratorium on any new operations of gaming parlors. And then House Bill 7 was also passed, which also had a moratorium feature to it. And there have been some petitions circulating by a group trying to put the issue to a vote next fall, be it the fall election next year, on whether or not the regulations would go in effect. Uh, we have been waiting. There was no point in, in putting forward any local regulations on these operations since it was under a moratorium. We couldn't have any new ones anyway, at least any lawful ones. And when we figured there was no point in trying to reinvent the wheel, we would wait until the General Assembly put rules in place and then just model our zoning restrictions after that. 
and I suspect that they're not going to get enough signatures to put this on the ballot so we can go forward. Okay, that's great. So what I'd like you to do is just take a look through this. You're going to have to print House Bill 7 for everybody. Okay. There's new terminology that we need to incorporate, that type of thing. And we'll look at maybe the third week of October for a meeting. Okay. And there are probably some other zoning issues we can address at the same time. Yeah, we have kind of a list of things that popped up that we, we want to discuss at the next. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Ken, anything tonight? Well, I think the report is we have three complaints against the dwellings that we seek to pay the nuisance we have to file. We have a requisite period of time now. We have to wait for the service of process and then we'll proceed. All right. Thank you. Anything for Ken? Nope. Mike? No, not tonight. All right, we'll move through our general township items. First item on the agenda is discuss putting up a place at the entrance of the meeting room prior to election and repairs to the siding at the front of the fire station. I had said I had something that pertained to the fire department, and I see, you know, without the board secretary and our clerk, I think I'd be lost, but once in a while I am lost because I had told them I was going to look at this, and the next thing I know, I read this, and, it, and they already had it on the agenda. Uh, we've had a, on our, in our entrance to our meeting hall, we've had a little bit of a ledge on it that doesn't look like it would bother anybody at all, but it does. We had a guy fall on the last election, and we've had several people trip on it and it's time to fix it. I got a price for it. They're going to install a 4x4 four four, uh, and then cover it with a plastic sleeve and bolt that down and then bolt it into the post and it will stick up. We'll still have 50 inches entrance to the building so it's not going to really cut down but it's going to eliminate that little ledge that causes so much trouble. Uh, I have a price on it of $385, and uh, so I'll move that for you. Go. It's from Fluor Construction, and he guarantees it'll be done before the election. All right, second. Yes. And the other thing is, at the front of the building, at the peak, we've had trouble with the side. We've repaired it a couple times, so I had Mr. Fluor come out and look at it, and he says, there's a couple things. Either it's not nailed right, and I'm not sure about that, or the fascia board is not wide enough to contain it. Um, so I've talked to him and told him to take loose what needs to up to five, up to four or five rows, and put a new fascia board on it to stop that from blowing up when we get a wind. And so uh, he's going to remove the existing aluminum uh, fascia and gave wins of the department, remove and reinstall at least five rows of siding, including new fascia. That'll solve that problem once and, once and for all. And the labor on that, material and labor, is $560. I'll make a motion that we do this. That's fine. Second. Yes. Anything else? <laughs> no, that's not. All right. <laughs> Next item. Uh, October will soon be upon us. We need to schedule our trick-or-treat. Historically, we've done that on Halloween. I don't see any reason to deviate, so I move that we schedule trick-or-treat in the township for the 31st of October from 5 to 7. Second. Yes. Next item, I'll move we open a purchase order to Staples in the amount of $167.41 for office supplies. Second. Yes. I'll move we open a purchase order to Ohio Consumers Council the amount of $100 for the IGR reported for calendar year 2012. Second. Aggregation. Move we open a purchase order to PUCO in the amount of $100 for the annual aggregation fee for 2012. Second. Yes. Final item on here, I'll move we reimburse Township Secretary Jamie Raber $13.23 for office supplies. Second. Yes. 
Ed, any other general township items? No, I, I just want to comment. I see we have the mayor of Louisville. We have the mayor's, mayor of Louisville and the uh, head of the Stark County Stark. I was I was a member of the board down there for several years, and it's nice that the mayor come over to learn what little townships do. Uh, and, I'm, and of course, I'm glad to see this year. All right, Mike, anything general township related? Uh, no, not at this time. Okay. All right, we have the cash revenue and expenditure financial report for year to date prepared by the fiscal officer. And I'll move that we approve that as prepared. Second. Bills tonight are $27,900.28. Move we authorize payment of those bills. Second. Yes. Number of communication items we typically receive, catalogs, seminar notices, and such. I'll move we file all of the communication. Second. Second. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and adjourn here in a moment. First, I'll open the floor for any questions, comments, anything that anybody has for us. Doesn't look like anybody's going to claim any time, so that's fine. Bart, there's no motion tonight on uh, the four people in this room delivering the township deliver uh, <laughs> We'll get you. Well, you know, you have that competing interest. Um, Zoning regulations and the First Amendment. <laughs> Believe it or not, there are some areas that do put restrictions on political signs. Virtually every time they're hailed into court, they lose. So. Anybody else? We do not activate people over political signs. <laughs> exactly. All right. Nothing else? After we adjourn, I'm going to turn things over to our President Emeritus, Mr. Moffitt, who will handle the introductions formally of our guests tonight and uh, proceed with the presentations that they have. Anything else from the board? I have nothing. All right, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Second? Yes. All right, Ed, it's yours. Well, we welcome the sheriff here tonight. Uh, I think he's doing a good job, and, and um, uh, we renewed our contract and he gave us a break on it. There was no increase in price, and we signed a 18-month contract to give the new trust when there's a new board, uh, when there's one new face on the board, I should say. Uh, that will give them time to see what we're gonna do as far as that uh, sheriff contract. It's been good. I started the sheriff contract 28 years ago, because we had a police department that was just <coughs> too much trouble and politics was in and around to it, depended on who you know, whether you got a ticket or not. So I had talked to the Senate Sheriff and um, decided we needed that. And through the aid of the Sheriff and the other trustees, we were able to get a contract and I think that it's worked out good. I told him today, I can't remember when I had a complaint about the Sheriff Department the last time. It's really worked out well for us, and I think George is doing a good job. So, uh, George, the floor is yours. Thank you, and good evening, everyone. It's certainly an honor and privilege to be here with you. Thank you to the trustees for the invitation to be here. I appreciate it. A um, couple things. Uh, first, I uh, want to introduce our deputy, Deputy Grillia. There's one of your township deputies here. And uh, my executive officer, Captain George, who's with us here tonight. So I um, thought it would be nice to put a couple of faces with some names so that you could see some of the folks from our office. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been your sheriff for, uh, not that I'm counting, but uh, it'll be eight months next week. And um, I can tell you that prior to being sheriff, I spent, uh, seems like a lifetime, with the Ohio State Highway Patrol. Uh, I was a trooper. I worked my way through the ranks, and um, in 2007, 
Um, I was appointed as the Assistant Director of the Ohio Department of Public Safety. When I left the Highway Patrol, I was a commander, uh, which is a district captain. Uh, I had uh, 10 counties that I was responsible for and uh, six highway patrol posts. Um, spent uh, my tenure at the uh, Ohio Department of Public Safety. Uh, there were eight divisions within the Ohio Department of Public Safety. Uh, one of the divisions was the Ohio State Highway Patrol, so I really didn't go too far. I still stayed with uh, public safety and uh, the Ohio State Highway Patrol, and um, it was uh, certainly my honor to be part of that organization. Um, about a little over a year and a half ago, in 2012, I was appointed by the Mayor of Maslin to be the Safety and Service Director for the City of Maslin. I served in that capacity for a little over a year when the um, unfortunate, uh, uh, I say the unfortunate opportunity, but the opportunity arose for an appointment to the Sheriff's Office as a result of the uh, untimely illness of um, Sheriff-elect Michael McDonald. Uh, since I was appointed, I have some things I want to talk about, uh, but shortly after I was appointed, Ed gave me a call, and I, I did not know your trustees. I knew uh, Mr. Um, Matthews through uh, an acquaintance through the city of Maslin, some work he had done there. I really didn't know the other trustees, and one day I got a call from uh, Ed, and he said he needed to come see me. And I thought to myself, now I wonder why this guy's coming to see me all of a sudden. I thought maybe he was going to fire me. Everybody else wanted to fire me, so I thought maybe he wanted to fire me too. Uh, he didn't really want to fire me, but he wanted to uh, work me over for a good deal, and I think we did that, didn't we? <laughs> um, he came to see me, and the contract expired, I think, at midnight that night or the next day, and I come to find out that we needed to put uh, a level of protection or finalize the contract so that we could continue the, the services that we provide here in the township. And so we, uh, he did some forced trading with me, and we were able to come up with an agreement that the other trustees were uh, satisfied with. So, and we we're happy to do that, and I think we did make it a little bit long, a longer contract so that uh, we allow for a new trustee coming in to work through any uh, issues they may have in renewing the contract. And we hope that they do that, whoever that may be, will continue to have the, our relationship. Because we do have a great and long-standing relationship here. I think Ed mentioned 28 years. Um, that's nothing to shake your hat at. That's, uh, that should be, I mean, not to say that there's not any hiccups, there's always going to be hiccups, but, you know, we are fortunate enough to have previous trustees get us an outpost here, and, you know, you look at this place here, your trustees have done a great job for you, and I think that we are uh, part of what they've done for the township. I want to talk a little bit about my vision for the Stark County Sheriff's Office and for Lexington Township. Um, you may have seen in the paper a week or so ago or heard about uh, a bunch of these deputies up here following school buses. And I'm really big on community policing. I talk to my staff almost on a daily basis on these crazy ideas that I come up with about community policing and how, how we can be more in touch with the communities that we serve. So one of the things that we put together in our office was a program to go out and shadow school buses when they're picking up the students, picking up your children at the bus stops, ride on the school buses with the bus drivers, see what they're encountering when they're on the buses, take a look at the traffic patterns, and we were able to do that in 11 school districts in Stark County. We made contact with over 5,000 parents, students. Uh, we had 52 buses that we rode. Uh, we shadowed or followed 67 other buses. Um, we had 31 traffic stops with one stop, one violation for passing a stop school bus. And so, you know, unfortunately, we as the motoring public get a little complacent. And some of the things that get in our way, I won't mention any, but some of the things that sometimes will distract us are the things that can lead us down the wrong path and cause an accident. And so we thought it was important to get out and remind both the students, the parents, the teachers, the school bus drivers that we are out there and we are out there to ensure their safety. So I think it was very successful. We were at the Marlington School District, so we were in this area. We rode a number of buses over there. I think they did have something in the Alliance paper, as I recall. So that's one of the 
projects that we'll, you know, we've worked on, we'll continue to work on. Matter of fact, I just had a staff meeting today with uh, my staff, and I, I mentioned to my patrol lieutenants that I want to continue to be visible in school zones and to stop by the schools and just get in and go in and introduce themselves, say hello to the students and the teachers, maybe even go in and sit down at the lunch table and have lunch with the students from time to time. So again, I'm big on community policing, so that's something that's near and dear to my heart. One of the things that I want to mention, a couple of um, accomplishments that, we, that I feel we've had since I've been there in the uh, first eight months. You know, when I first come to the office, I had a week, one week, to resubmit the budget that had been submitted by the previous uh, folks that were there before me to the county commissioners for approval. I uh, was able to sit down with staff, rework that budget, and shave $1.1 million off the free, previously projected budget. And that's the budget we're operating off of. And I can tell you right now, today, at a report, we're well within our spending limit and we're getting things done. Okay, so uh, that's one of the things we're able to do. Uh, you know, one of the things that was promised to the citizens of Stark County is to get that jail up and running to the 501 bed capacity. When I first got there, it was at, I think, 400 beds. Shortly after I got there, we made some staffing changes and adjustments, and we were able to open it to 450. Now, everybody, the big question is, when are we going to open to the 501? Well, the challenge that we had is we had to hire 45 employees this year. Then we lost nine. So if you add 9 to 45, I know why I went to mass one, so my mass is a little slow, but I think that's 53. So that's 53 people we had to hire just to get up the capacity to do what we need to be doing. And I can tell you that we're at about 40, 42 right now projected. We've hired or we're projected to be hired, and we're well on track by the latter part of this year to be in, meet our goal and get that jail opened up to 501 beds. So I'm really pleased with that. Really pleased also with the work my staff put to get to uh, actually hire those folks because when you talk about hiring folks, it, it may seem like it's a simple task, but it's very difficult. At least for us, because we have not compromised our integrity or our um, requirements to get people through the door. We changed a few processes, but we have not compromised for one minute what we do to get good people through the door. So and we'll continue to, to do that. You might have noticed the litter patrols. We have litter patrols that we started back up. They've had these years ago. And uh, for whatever reason, staffing, they got away from it. And we get a grant from the Department of uh, Transportation. And we have litter patrols that will run all the way into what, November? I think the first of November. We'll be out here. You see the bags along the highway as we hit the roads. The only misfortune uh, about that is I was telling somebody uh, yesterday, one of our deputies stopped somebody on 62 and Harmon for throwing trash out of the car. And I can't tell you the number of times that we picked up bags of trash along 62 and certainly in the intersection of Harmon. So I hope that person got some type of uh, an award or driving certificate for throwing that trash out of the car. I don't know what the fall, how the fall up on that seat, but you know, there's a, there's a couple problems. One of the problems is there's trash on the road, we need to pick it up. But the other problem is we have people throwing trash on the road. So we'll, we continue to work on that. Uh, we have improved our efficiency in our CCW permit process. Um, shortly after I got there, I received a, a number of calls and complaints about the CCW process. Uh, people would come and stand in, in line for hours at a time. Uh, and then they would leave, and they, they would leave without their CCW permit. And they'd have to come back at least one more time, maybe two, and stand in line again. So we've changed that now, we've modified some things there, we'll continue to look at that how we can make that efficient again and not compromise the process to check people and get people uh, certified, or not certified, but get their location their license. Uh, we are uh, currently looking at um, updating our sex offender compliance checks. We're working with the U.S. Marshals as a cooperative to, we have uh, about seven or 800 Actually, there's about 1,100, but some of those are incarcerated. So there's about 7,800 um, sex offenders in the county that are registered through us. And it's our job to ensure that they're complying with the law. And uh, we, we make about 60 to 65 arrests or so, 60 to 70 arrests a year for those that are not compliant. And uh, we, we're looking at uh, a project right now with the U.S. Marshals that we can check the compliance of about seven or 800 uh, 
sex offenders in the county, which will probably include some of your areas in the township. Uh, you might have read in the paper that we uh, recently signed a contract with the county commissioners for the 911 call takers project. Um, you know, they've asked us to take a look at that, and quite frankly, folks, um, it's as really as simple as this. Somebody sat on that side of the room, answered the phone, and said, this is 911, do you need police, fire, or EMS? Once the party answered, then they handled the phone to somebody on this side of the room, which are my employees. So this takes a layer out of that and saves the county about $350,000 a year. Okay, so you know, we're all about uh, working together and developing partnerships and being more efficient. I was told I had three minutes, and I just took about eight or ten, so I apologize. <laughs> uh, but it's really uh, certainly my honor to be here with you guys and talk to you about some of the accomplishments of the office. And we look to uh, an exciting future with the township, a continued relationship with the township. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. But before I do, I want to tell you that we had uh, about 2,200 calls here um, January to September in the township. So we responded to about 2,200 calls in the township. Good. Anybody have any questions? I think they do an excellent job. Thank you. We're familiar with Deputy Gurley, and he does a terrific job for us. Great. Excellent. Very good. And I did hand out an application to somebody from your community here tonight, so I want you to know that we're always recruiting good people. Again, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, we look forward to the pleasure or the opportunity to come up and talk to you again in the near future. And if you have any questions, so you know how to reach us, we're happy to respond to the questions you have. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for coming over. I think it really means a lot to the community when they see you and you come you're available for questions. I think it's a good PR thing. Thank you. Appreciate it. everybody has their own uh, waste hauling contract. So what we do is we provide the drop-off, uh, which you have out here. And I want to thank the trustees for allowing the district to have a drop-off there uh, for the residents. And I notice it's very clean. Everything in the, in the township here is clean. And I love this floor, too. I kept admiring this floor, and I wanted to find out what material this is on this. Because this is probably the, the neatest, cleanest looking uh, garage floor I've, I've ever seen. Uh, but the recycling program is, uh, it's really growing, but we're still like a, a long ways off because we still only recycle about five, less than 5% of residential waste that's generated. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that we have two of the largest landfills right here in Stark County. Countywide landfill and also uh, uh, American landfill. So what that means is that it's very inexpensive to uh, dispose of your waste. Whereas if you go to New York or California, they don't have as much landfill space, 
So it's actually more cost efficient for them to recycle material than to uh, than the landfill. Uh, so there is some uh, other good news. We don't have other recycling bins out there, but uh, Sheriff Meyer is very familiar with the recycling program because now at the Sheriff's Department, they collect all the recyclables. It used to just be the, um, the uh, paper, and now they're collecting the paper, the cardboard, the plastic, glass, aluminum, and, uh, and also plastics three through seven. So normally we would just collect the plastics one and two, but now here at the township, you can collect the three through seven also. So what that means real quick, this is like a, um, this is typically like a plastic, uh, you know, the one and two are the water bottles and, and the pop bottles. These, these uh, containers here, this is a, I believe this is a five, and it has the, uh, the number on there, this is a five. And then yogurt containers, all of those smaller plastic items you can now put in the recycling bin. The challenge that we're having is relabeling all the 450 bins in the three county area. Yeah. In some cases, they have to be repainted. So we didn't want to put labels on new decals until we get them repainted. So it is a process to try and get out to all the, uh, all the townships. I do have two recycling bins in the back and the township. You can use them for your office or if you'd like to raffle them off or however you want to handle that. There was a, a, a few discussions as far as how you folks wanted to handle that. But, uh, but again, we appreciate the support of the trustees and the community. And if there's ever anything we can do, uh, please let us know. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Stick around, tour the facility here. Please help us get rid of the cookies and <laughs> coffee and such that's in the back. And thanks again for coming out tonight. Jeff, we have a ticket for the recycling bin. We do. We are going to wrap or do a drawing for the recycling bin. We need to get a ticket. We have one. We need to get a